Hi friends, Stacy Robertson, founder of Tea Market, and today I want to share with you a little mini version of our Tea Basics class. Um, we have really, really enjoyed doing classes at Tea Market and uh, thought it would be fun to offer kind of a smaller version on a little video for you. So let's get started. One of the things that people always uh, find interesting to learn about tea is what is not tea. I actually have another video called What is Tea and What Isn't? So the first thing that I want to start with you today is something that is not tea. And this is our Mandarin chamomile. This is what we would call an herbal infusion. And an herbal infusion is something that we drink hot in a cup, like we drink tea, that doesn't contain tea leaves. So this would include peppermint. You know how we always say peppermint tea? Well, there's no tea in that at all. It's simply peppermint. So this is one of any of the millions of botanical plants on the planet that you can pick and dry and steep in hot water and drink in a cup just like you do tea. So this is mandarin chamomile. And I'm gonna show you some really basic ways, different ways that you can uh, use to steep your Holy Foods tea. The first thing that I wanna show you are tea pockets. They come in a package just like this. There are 64 in a package and these are compostable and all you do is open it up like so. And this is our perfect tea measuring spoon. You don't have to take my word for it. It says one cup of perfect tea right on the handle of the spoon. And so what we wanna do, you wanna use a scoop like this for every eight ounces of water. This little pitcher that I'm gonna make this in holds 16 ounces of water, so I'm gonna use two. I, you probably have a drawer full of spoons at your house and you think the last thing I need is another spoon, but it's really nice to have a single thing that you always measure your tea in so that you stay consistent. The worst thing is like if you make uh, any recipe or anything that you enjoy and you kind of shoot from the hip and make it one way one day and then the next day it doesn't come out the same. If you're using the same measuring spoon all the time, you get a consistent result, which is really nice. So you can use anywhere from 180 degrees water or boiling water, which water boils at 212, to steep your herbal infusions. Herbal infusions, because they don't contain tea, they're not going to get bitter. So you can steep them as long as you like. And when you do that, that's something that my granny used to say, is that you're getting all the goody out of it. So the longer that you steep an herbal infusion, the more of the efficacious properties you're pulling out of the botanical. For example, if you're drinking mandarin chamomile, because you know that chamomile can help you become restful and sleepy at night, steeping it for a longer time would give you more of that that property. We also sell the perfect little tea timer and so you would set that to four minutes and just let that steep just like that. So these little tea bags are wonderful. These are great for when you're on the go as well. Uh, I like to make my tea bags up in advance, pop them in my purse, and then when I go to my favorite restaurants that don't serve my favorite tea market teas, I just order hot water and I can pull these out and you're ready to go. So these are great for, for convenience and for travel. And one of the things that people always ask me, can you reuse them? I'm not sure what the question means. Um, you can take the tea out and put it back in and steep it again. But as far as cleaning them out and going with a different tea, I don't really see that happening. So they are compostable and, um, and they're really, really convenient and very nice. All right, moving on to what is tea. First, I'm gonna start with white tea. So tea, the tea plant, the botanical name of the tea plant is Camellia sinensis. And have you ever heard that saying, all the tea in China? That's because that's where tea comes from. That is where the creator put the plant on the planet. That is where its indigenous home is. And so anything that contains the Camellia sinensis plant, we refer to as true tea, as being tea. So the next um, way to brew tea that I wanna show you is this is a great dish infuser. It comes with this little porcelain dish which you can use to set it after you take it out and then it's stainless steel, has a super fine mesh, and because it has this long handle, it will fit right on any cup or mug that you already have. The, the white tea that I've chosen for you today is our white pomegranate. This is a beautiful white tea leaf, Mutan white tea leaf. It also has silver needle in it, 
and it has pomegranate and hibiscus. Again, I'm using two spoonfuls. This is really, really fluffy, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more. Some of the white teas that we have, we have a beautiful true leaf silver needle, and then we have a blend that I actually made for a book that I love called The Tea, Bird, Tea Girl of Hummingbird Lane. Oh my gosh, if you wanna learn uh, a lot about tea and read a wonderful story, like a multi-generational mother-daughter story, you would love that book too. But they talk about pu'er teas and they talk about white teas. So I actually blended a tea I call White Mountain uh, for that book, and it's a combination of those teas together. So for white teas, you can use about 175 to 180 degree water on that, and you would simply pour it over. This is a great infuser, and it's going to give us a beautiful uh, infusion of this particular tea while making sure that we don't get anything floating in our cup or in our pot. We also have a beautiful white tea called Wedding Tea, and it has lemon myrtle, and it has vanilla, and is a really, really nice blend. Uh, so we have a nice little selection of white teas for you to choose from. Next, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to heat water to 160 degrees for the green tea, which is next. White teas are simply plucked, withered, and dried. They undergo the most uh, minimal amount of processing of any tea. And they're really, really light in flavor and very nice. And we want to steep our white tea for anywhere from three to four minutes as well. Now, green teas are a little fussy and they really like a lower water temperature. So I'm going to use 160 degrees for green tea. This is my wonderful Bonavita kettle that I can pre-program that temperature and actually the kettle will hold that for 30 minutes. So I am heating this water to 160 degrees for our green tea. The next piece of tea brewing equipment that I want to show you is called this infuser is a medium infuser, and it has got that super fine stainless steel mesh that they sometimes use in coffee filters. So it's so fine that you certainly could, and it's perfect for making green teas. And comes with a lid that keeps it warm while it steeps, and then also becomes the saucer for that. And the green tea that I've chosen for you today is Berry Wellness. It is our number one best-selling green tea. Again, I'm gonna use two spoonfuls of tea right inside. Some of our other green teas, um, we do have many blended green teas, Japanese cherry, tropical green. We have a beautiful one for summer called Double Mint, which is Wu Wee Mouth Balm green tea with peppermint and spearmint, and it's a lovely blend. But green teas are super high in antioxidants, they're antiviral, they're antibacterial. You can't read an article about health and wellness and how to stay healthy without having them mention green tea. It's because it really, really is so good for us. And so green teas are wonderful, low in caffeine. I love to let people know that a cup of green tea has about as much caffeine as a Hershey's Kiss. And so if you're trying to control the caffeine, green tea is a great way to do that. Plus, you're getting all those wonderful polyphenols, catechins, and antioxidants, and those things that boost our immune system, help us stay really, really healthy. And green tea is a great way to do that. So some of our green teas that aren't blended, sometimes people like plain green tea, all right? And that really just means a tea on its own, a true leaf tea that isn't blended with fruit or flowers. Speaking of that, at Tea Market, all of our blended teas, I refer to them as blended teas because they're exactly that. No artificial flavors, no artificial ingredients, and those types of things. It's just the true fruit, flower, herb, spice, um, that's all natural. And so our tea, water, I'm sorry, has come to 160 degrees, and I'm just gonna pour it over and steep our green tea. Right. The mandarin chamomile is finished, and when you steep tea like this, you simply remove the tea pocket, and it is crystal clear and beautiful. The nice thing about the tea pocket, these are great for something like chamomile that can have what we refer to as 
uh, very, very small, tiny particulate matter, maybe little pieces that could go floating through another infuser. If you have a tea like that, that has those really small particles in it, a tea pocket is the perfect way to come up with a crystal clear cup of tea like that. All right, next we have oolong tea. Sometimes you will see this, uh, if you look on the internet, sometimes you'll see it referred to as oolong. Uh, because oolong and wulong, both words were uh, taken from the kanji uh, for that particular word. It has different spellings and different pronunciations, but they're all talking about the same thing. And oolong teas are semi-oxidized tea. So far, we've had green tea, which is not oxidized at all. White tea also is not oxidized. And then oolong teas are lightly oxidized. And this particular one is really popular. If you like wonderful, fruity, healthy teas, you would love our oolong goddess. And this is oolong goddess. And what I'm gonna make it for, make it for you in, is our Timolino tea maker. This is the perfect thing for teas that you're going to want to re-infuse, uh, which is a fancy term for simply pouring more water over the same tea leaves and steeping them again. This one is great, and it has a little, the infusing portion pops out just like that. And the shape of it is shaped like this so that it holds the tea leaves out of any collected moisture so that they don't really stew between infusions, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna spoon two spoonfuls of oolong goddess. And this is a tightly rolled nugget, lightly oxidized oolong tea. And if you like green teas that you don't really, really love, sort of that grassy vegetal nature, but you want the health benefits, a lightly oxidized oolong tea would be perfect for you because it rounds out the flavor a little bit, takes off a little bit of that grassy vegetal edge, but still gives you all the wonderful antioxidants and polyphenols. And so. This is one of the best ways in the world to make tea, is to just simply let it float loose like this, and it allows every single tea leaf to become completely saturated, and then release all its flavor and goodness into the water. You know, we impact our will on tea in three ways. So the tea comes to us as the tea master intended, and then we, uh, the three ways that we control what ends up, the flavor that it results in our cup, is through leaf to water ratio, that's measuring, so using one scoop of tea for eight ounces of water. And then the second thing is water temperature. The water temperature really affects um, the end result because if you steep certain teas in too hot of water, they can become bitter. I know lots of people that think that they don't like green tea because they think it's bitter. If you pour boiling water over it, you make it bitter. And so if using the right water temperature is how you really control that. And then the other thing is steeping time. How long do you steep it? And that really affects the end result as well. And so our green teas are ready in just three minutes. And you just set it right here. Great little saucer for that. Again, we end up with a beautiful crystal clear cup of tea. White tea is all ready as well. Now, we do have a uh, darker oxidized oolong teas. Some of them, Wui uh, Oolong is a beautiful kind of dark oolong tea. And then we have a wonderful blend called Shalimar, which is super fruity. It has flowers and different fruits. And then, um, let's see, oh, lemon basil oolong. That is a lovely uh, dark oxidized tea. So this one is gonna steep for a little bit. And then lastly, the last category of tea we have are black teas and black teas are fully oxidized. That's why they look so different. So if you're looking at green tea and then you're looking at black tea, you can see that this dark color comes from being fully oxidated. And one of my favorite examples of oxidation is grapes and raisins. You know that Sunmay tells us on the package that uh, the only thing in there is grapes and sunshine because oxidation, what it does, when you eat a fresh grape, you know how you get that pop of acidic flavor in your mouth? It sometimes gets you right here. And then raisins, by comparison, 
are rich and chewy and have a really round, smooth flavor. And that's what oxidation does. It kind of knocks that vegetal edge off of tea, rounds it out, makes it smooth, and intensifies it. So think of a fresh summer tomato and sun-dried tomatoes where they're dry. The flavor is really, really concentrated. So black teas are the fullest in body, fullest in flavor. So if you're looking for something that has a big flavor, black teas might be what you're looking for. And the one that I've chosen to make for you today is our most intensely flavored black tea, which is our Irish breakfast. Our Irish breakfast is an organic, all Assam tea from India and it has got all the caffeine kick you're looking for and that dark rich malty flavor and this particular pot that i'm making it in this is a real favorite around here this is called a sitka pot and it's just the cutest shape of a pot and again it allows us to steep tea in a way that is the perfect way to make it which is just letting it float loosely in a pot you will notice that i have not used a tea ball those little things that jam the tea all up together i have a funny video on why we don't sell tea balls, um, that I actually go into depth about that. And I think I end up throwing one across the room, right? Okay. So this one, I ran out of water, but you can see what I'm talking about here. So we just pop the lid on, and the strainer for this is in the lid. So it will simply strain the tea leaves away from the brewed tea as you pour. All right, so our oolong goddess is ready, and I'm going to show you what this does. So you would set this, if you're drinking this from your cup, you would set this right on top of your cup. But I'm going to put this right on our little pitcher. And so the brewed tea simply drains away from the tea leaves. And we're left with nothing but that beautiful crystal clear infusion. And then this oolong goddess, as are all oolong teas, you can steep them two to three to four times. And then the tea leaves will stay right inside. And you can pour more water over and steep it again. All right. Some of our really super popular black teas, our Irish breakfast is really popular. Our English breakfast is a blend of black teas from China, and it's very smooth and balanced, whereas the Irish breakfast has a little bit of that bite to it. Uh, masala chai is a really uh, wonderful one. Hot cinnamon spice is super popular. Everybody loves that. A really fruity one that's very nice if you like a really fru fruity flavor. Birthday tea and Bora Bora come to mind, as well as our black currant. So check out the list, check out the menu. We have lots and lots to choose from. And if you don't want to fool with any of this, you can always cold brew teas. I have another video on making iced tea where you would simply, in this size pitcher, spoon four of our measuring teaspoons right inside here. Fill this up with cold water, put it together, and just let it sit. We like to do uh, green teas, two hours on the counter, black teas overnight in the refrigerator. This awesome pitcher fits right in your refrigerator door and it works beautifully. So I hope that answers a few of your questions on the basics of tea. And as I pour this, we hope that you will come and see us and find your favorites or hop online and shop teamarket.com and let us send some of these lovely, beautiful tea and everything that I've shown you today is available on the website as, as well. So we love your questions. Give us a call, check us out online, Facebook, Instagram, if we can be of any help and we will see you soon. Thank you.